In this video I want to pay some attention to a shortwave VFO variable frequency oscillator circuit. This is how it was made on the breadboard. This is the wave that it generates. I don't know uh, exactly the frequency because I didn't connect my frequency counter to it all. But uh, that's not very interesting. Um, here you see how the circuit was made. I want to show that later in detail. And this is the book where this uh, oscillator is showed to up to 10 megahertz shortwave receiver and one transistor VFOs. This book is on the Lulu website. And here I describe a simple shortwave receiver that's also demonstrated on my YouTube channel. For all people interested in radio. Always fascinating the radio. How it's possible to receive uh, radio stations from 100 kilometers far away. And these are some pictures, they are black and white in this book. But on the video on my YouTube channel you can see uh, it in color. Okay, um, this is the circuit that I want to demonstrate. It's this oscillator circuit. Hope you can read it. Uh, it's a Hartley oscillator and it works properly, though for um, shortwave, simple shortwave radios, it has some flaws. Um, this is the principle from the circuit. It's here. And when you want to make it in real, you always have to take in account that there is a certain emitter and collector current. They have to be limited, so it's not possible to um, make the circuit like it is showed in the principle. It's more or less impossible. Also the voltage divider on the base. Um, you must make that variable to set the transistor to a certain working point. Here you see the variable resistor that I've used to set the transistor to its working point. When you don't do that, the whole circuit that showed here as a principal uh, circuit, fundamental circuit, doesn't work. And also you have to find out the right values for all the uh, resistors and capacitors. For the coil, that's not very um, difficult. It's in an earlier video how to calculate a coil for a certain frequency. But the voltage divider here on the base is crucial for success and you need an emitter and a collector resistor. So this is how the circuit finally was developed. This is the coil. I made the coil here on a PVC tube with a massive copper wire insulated and this wire is used in telephone circuits. It has very good properties when you want to use this wire uh, for a shortwave coil. It's also an air coil and that's also for a certain reason. But uh, here you see the number of turns from the coil. This is a parallel capacitor. This forms a tuned circuit in the shortwave range. The whole circuit can work between 1.9 and 12.6 MHz. And um, it will not always work with the same coil. You have to short out the coil. Here you can see that I've made some taps on the coil. And with this wire I can short out certain windings on the coil. It makes the coil shorter. And that also means that the frequency goes up. That can also be reached 
by uh, changing the parallel capacitor to a lower value. So when you take 500 picofarad, you get in the low frequency band from the short wave. When you take, um, uh, let's say, 50 picofarad capacitor, you will get to the high frequency band from the short wave. Of course, you can uh, count all the numbers of turns. Let's say uh, it's approximately 50, but here you find the precise values from all these turns. Um, as I told earlier, always use a potentiometer here to set the transistor to its working point. And also here you need an emitter resistor and a collector resistor, otherwise the whole circuit doesn't work. So, as I told earlier, this is only pure theory. It doesn't work in real. In reality. I mean, um, this is the waveform, and um, I can immediately show what happens when we change the working point from the transistor by turning the potentiometer on the base. So you can see that it completely disappears here. It's very critical. And I don't know why it disappears completely. Perhaps I have to switch the voltage a little bit down. But, um, okay, I'm sure that the whole circuit works properly. So this is a reliable circuit. Um, you can take the um, signal out by a um, series capacitor CX and that has a certain influence on the waveform and uh, how that worked is shown in an earlier video. So a useful oscillator here for a short wave radio. Um, the only flaw from the circuit is that the coil here is not grounded. And uh, that means that the coil uh, is lifted up to the ground level and that the circuit can suffer from hand effect. And that means when you try to tune this uh, oscillator to a certain frequency, your hand and your body have a certain influence on the oscillator frequency. It can go up or down, often it will go down because your body acts as a capacitor. So uh, you need a well insulated knob on the parallel capacitor to tune in the radio on the different frequencies. And an other oscillator that has that does not suffer from hand effect is uh, also published in this book. And also here you find all kinds of uh, oscillator uh, oscilloscope pictures from all the waveforms. So you can see uh, uh, whether the waveform is pure or pure enough to be used as a VFO in a shortwave radio.